Hello and welcome to my War of Rights video for beginners. In this video we will talk about some of the basics of this game, including the mechanics that are behind the scenes. This game heavily relies on cooperation within the players on your side. Running around by yourself is not encouraged, although it is necessary from time to time. Hopping in, you can click on Server Browser. We'll see we have several servers to pick from. East Coast, West Coast, European player counts, ping, passwords, refresh option at the bottom, pick a server and go. You have your options here, gameplay, graphics, sound, key bindings. You can play around with all of these. I would strongly suggest playing around with them. Set up what works best for you. It's going to be different from computer to computer. Hopping into any camp, you can hit the F1 and see a list of all your emotes and actions. Let's talk about stamina. Stamina is a big part of this game. It's exhausted in several ways. Stamina can be regained while being in formation. Being around six or more guys would be considered formation. Anything less, the stamina regenerates at a slower rate. Here's some examples of what burns stamina. Double quick marching. Charging, which will probably exhaust your stamina the quickest. Vaulting fences or stone walls. Melee combat. There are two forms of melee combat. Either with the butt of your weapon or with the bayonet. Hitting V puts you into melee mode. If attempting to kill an enemy player with the butt of your weapon, it will take you three strikes, successful strikes. Bayonet will take two. The first hit will always concuss the enemy. Loading your rifle. There are two ways to load your rifle. Crouching or standing. I would suggest standing. If you are crouching your weapon to load, it will take you about 25 seconds to load your weapon. I would suggest this only if you have 100% cover, either a large rock, a stone wall, or a solid fence, or a building. Anytime you're crouching and you're killed, you are considered to be in skirmish formation, which will cost you three times the morale than if you were standing. Standing and loading takes approximately 19 seconds. The HUD. The HUD is very important in this game. Hit T to activate your HUD. There is a section of the HUD that will be in the top middle of your screen and a section of the HUD that will be at the bottom right corner. It will also put nameplates over all friendly players' heads. This is important for when you get into melee combat. The top portion in the middle has several items on it. You have a timer with time left on the map. You have a compass. You have a counter for your cap point. You also have your CSA flag and your USA flag with the morale status of both teams. Currently it's at battle ready. There are four phases to morale. Battle ready, engaged, taking losses, and breaking. When you hit zero at breaking, you lose the game. Capping as the attacker or defending as the defender is another way. The other part of our HUD setup is on the bottom right hand corner of the screen showing your run speed, the way you are holding your weapon, the type of weapon you are carrying, and what formation you're in. Currently we are in skirmishing mode, which will be anywhere from three to five players or a larger group of players spaced out. Nameplates show over friendly players' heads when T is active. Unless you hide in the woods somewhere, you will be involved in combat. Remember, stamina and hit T often. Combat in this game can become very intense with high population servers. The developers have done an excellent job in making a sense of realism and blood pumping intensity in this game. Concussion, fear, is a real thing in this game. Fear happens if you are ramboing or alone and being shot at or artillery going off near you. You can be impacted by enemy fire or artillery while in formation. Your weapon becomes shaky, blurred vision may occur. Heavy concussion happens from severe artillery fire, 
being hit but not killed by enemy fire, being stabbed or hit with melee weapons, all cause concussion. Remember to be in formation, helps recover the stamina and get you out of concussion that much quicker. In this slide, this is an example of a mild form of concussion, what it may look like on the battlefield. Uh, it can be a little bit more, a little bit less. The next slide will show us a version of heavy concussion. This is usually due to the fact you have been wounded in some way. Uh, very hard to see, just remember to hit T. Look for no names over the enemy's heads. With that being said, let's talk about formation. Being in formation is extremely important. That is six or more men within one to two feet of each other. If you start to spread out, you'll become in skirmish formation. Anytime you are out of formation, morale loss when you die becomes more. For example, if you are skirmishing, being between three and five guys, uh, spaced out or even next to each other, you'll lose three times the morale if you die. If you die out of formation, one or two guys running around by themselves, that is five times the morale when you die. Here's an example of a line in formation. If you died there, it's a one for one ticket loss. That's what your screen will look like if you die. This would look, be an example of a skirmish formation. Skirmish formation is a three times morale loss. And this is what your screen will look like if you die. Being alone and ramboing is never a good thing. That will cost you five times the morale. And this is what your screen will look like. Please try to stay in formation, it helps the team. So before you go off running around by yourself, find a group of guys to charge into battle with. Well, just as I was about to release this video, the developers decided to release Phase 2 of the game, which we are all very excited about. I'm not going to get too much into the details of that. There's really not a lot that majorly affects what I've talked about here. Uh, the one thing I will talk about is the spawning system that's been implemented, the flag bearer spawning system. If you can see here on the screen, I have my cursor pointed at the flag bearer option. When you are picking your unit or class, uh, you want to spawn in on the flag, you hit that button and wait in queue. A queue will be active and one player will spawn in at every 10 seconds if the flag bearer is in formation. If he is not in formation or in skirmishing mode, it will be one every 20 seconds. If he's out of line, nobody can spawn in on the flag bearer. Well, that wraps up this video. Please like if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the battlefield.